Okay. Boom. You want to obtain a sample. I want a sample size. So that means I'm on this situation. I have to determine which one I'm looking at. Okay. To estimate a population mean. I want a sample to estimate a population mean. Okay. Where's my formula? That's number three. This is the only one that deals with sample size determination for me. So definitely, oh, and then let me screenshot that. So definitely number three, but just copy and paste, all right? So that's how I determine not only whether or not I'm doing a confidence interval, and I'll rewrite it too, because it does look a little blurry sometimes, but whether or not I'm doing a confidence interval or a sample size, but also which situation it is. And actually, let me go pink. I'm color <laughs> um, but also, you know, which situation I'm dealing with. And this one is the third. So Z of alpha over two times sigma, that quantity, well, squared. I'll show you two ways you could do this, I guess, because you're squaring the whole fraction. So you could do the numerator squared and the denominator squared, or you could just do the whole fraction squared. Two different ways you could do that. So if I need to calculate this, then I need to figure out again the critical value, sigma, and the margin of error. So I'm going to look for those. I'm going to look for sigma, I'm going to look for the margin of error, and then I'm going to calculate my critical value. All right, let's see. Based on previous evidence, you believe the population, standard deviation, all right, have a good night. The population standard deviation is approximately boom, that. 78.5. So they give me sigma is 78.5. You would like to be 95% confident. All right, so my confidence level is 95%, which means that's going to give me alpha. Tell me if I'm going too fast. You see, I get so used to it, right? This is one minus that, alpha over two. I can just kind of Oops, I could just kind of breeze through it because you see the repetition. Repetition. And then in verse one, look at this. One minus. <laughs> I'm just setting it up. <laughs> Same thing again. Okay, I that that was me just reading this part. <laughs> you want to be 95% confident. That's where you know my critical value is coming from from my formula that your estimate is within five of the true population mean. This is the other way that they tell me the margin of error. My margin of error is five. It's not 5%, it's five. So it is five. I'm not writing 0 0.05 like I would if they told me it within 5%, okay? Um, I basically have everything but the critical value. So let's do it. Second bars, inverse norm. I'm just gonna do it as if the area we're to the left, one minus the point zero two five. You can stay consistent with that if you want to. Uh, one point nine, and then we're rounding. Does it say round? I guess we'll do four again. One point nine five. Right. One point nine six. <laughs> if I'm rounding that even to four, one point nine six. All right, cool. My Sample size is 1.96 times sigma, which was given 78.5, divided by E, which is 5, the quantity squared. It's really, this is just plug and chug. And then just be careful input, inputting the into your calculator. So parentheses around this. I want 1. Point, actually, I'm going to do this. 1.96 times 78.5, numerator, divided by 5. That's the fraction in the parentheses, then squared. So I'm doing the order of operations as I go through my calculator. 946.91, but we always round up. So 947. Even though this one rounded up, we always round up anyway. Always round up to the next whole number for minimum sample size. Always. So, um, stop recording.